mid-month meeting of the Nags Head Board of Commissioners please come to order. We have a motion for adoption of the agenda. So, second. We can second it in a discussion. Not all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those like sign there being none. At this time we'll have our time for public comments for any issue that's not being brought before the board this evening at, at a public hearing. Now's the time to bring that forward if you'd like to speak to the board. Uh, I ask you to hold your comments to no more than five minutes and I'll ask Mr. Light if he would be our timekeeper, please. Yes, sir. Anyone like to speak to the board tonight? If not, I'll declare our public comments. Session closed. We have a continuation of a public hearing to consider zoning ordinance text amendments establishing a table listing of permitted and prohibited uses within the town. Mr. Lighty, would you like to continue that public hearing for us, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. At this time, we will re resume the public hearing to consider the zoning ordinance text amendments that would establish a table listing uh, permitted and prohibited uses within the town, uh, mostly uh, to amend various different sections of Chapter 48 of the code. And uh, to resume our discussion, we'll call on Kelly Wyatt to present any updates on this proposed set of amendments. Thank you. Um, good, good afternoon, Kelly. Mayor and Commissioners. Um, very quickly, I think the last time we were up here, early May, I covered the construction of the ordinance um, we didn't get too deep into the chart itself but there were a couple of recommendations that we went ahead and applied to that um, if you recall there were two tables one was related to more of the town-wide table and then we had a table to address uh, specifically the village at Nags Head and there was some redundancy in those two tables so um, what we've done is consolidated those uses with the town and the village um, where the use was just prohibited across the board. Perfect. I can drive, right? Yes, you can. Um, I think, maybe. So just to highlight, like I said, we consolidated the, um, the village at Nags Head ordinance with the townwide ordinance. And in doing so, um, maybe here's the easiest way to do it. So we added this table, this um, row here, SPDC village at Nags Head. And what we did is if, uh, if it were a use that is permitted anywhere within the village, we put a V to represent, go check the village chart. And if it were prohibited throughout the village, we went ahead and put an X. <coughs> so that when you, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I do wanna go ahead and show here, we acknowledged where the V came from. So in this section, we talked about P stood for permitted and condition, or C stood for conditional, <clears throat> X stood for prohibited. And in this section, we note that a V in the, in the table um, represents that it is a use that is permitted somewhere within the village, and you need to refer to the village table to get specifics on that. Um, so again, this reduced the village at Nags Head table significantly. Um, now when you get down to the village at Nags Head table, um, any use that's listed there is permitted um, at some point throughout, throughout the village. Okay, here's the beginning of the village. So as you can see, um, all of these uses that are in this column are permitted somewhere within the village. Um, additionally, we updated the language of town code section 48-72, occupancy and construction. And I'll scroll down to that. Um, this section of the code 
we went ahead and inserted the language that um, if a use is unlisted, it is not automatically deemed to be prohibited. It will then be deemed to be a conditional use. So now the ordinance language um, within 4872 is now consistent with the construction of the new table. So those were, those, those were the changes that were made from the previous presentation at the regular meeting. Um, at, we had received several comments from Commissioner Ratzenberger <laughs> about possible changes, revisions, or inconsistencies. And um, I did address those earlier today. I can we can go through those individually, or I can I can hand out that information if you like. All right. Does the board have any questions for Miss Wyatt? Kelly might hand out that information if you got a handout sure. on it. Sure. So you've got a copy of it, but we can um, put it on the screen as well, if that's beneficial. I don't think this copy is right. Huh? You only got one page. That's all I got. No front and back? No. Nor then we there probably your, need to use your what's comment. on the screen. Oh, and your comments <laughs> didn't come out in red. Okay. So. Yes, my the one I got. That's thank you. No, it's okay. I'll just put these in recycle. It's easier. Again, I apologize. I did this this morning, but um. <laughs> That's, that's perfect. Um, so the first, the first note that was made um, was that museum is not listed in the SPDC and that might be something to consider uh, within the Outer Banks Mall. So I just made the note that what you have before you reflects the existing code um, as well as some recent history that we've had on uses that have been denied um, by the board. It doesn't contemplate new uses. While adding museum might very well be something that we want to do, um, that's not necessarily something that we had intended to do in this phase. We weren't looking to contemplate new uses or within new districts. Um, there's a question about an accessory church school. I think that might be worth discussion in the next phase. That might be something that we do want to provide um, indoor outdoor shooting ranges. Um, again, you, you may wish to discuss this, but that's typically not something that we would presume would be part of a sporting goods um, use. And so therefore, we do have it listed um, as a prohibited use. Um, auto dealerships, um, no worries. Um, it looks like there's an inconsistency there. And on some level, there, there is. Auto, automobile dealerships are not a permissible use within the town. Um, Broadly, however, within the village at Nags Head Commercial One, it is listed. Um, it is listed as a uh, permissible use if it is within an enclosed structure. Um, so 
So I know we don't have any of those, but it, is, it does appear to be an inconsistency because it's allowed in one area and not, not in another. Well, I think, and, and on this one here, I think your fix is you need to plug a V in in the line for dealership. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's, it's not inconsistent anymore. There's a V on that line and there's an entry in the village and we can move on and we can, later we can address the, the bigger issues. All right, okay. So. Um, fine arts and crafts, um, correct. Uh, that, with that notation, it is listed as a permissible use in the town, C1, C2, C3, C4. It is, uh, we have it listed as prohibited within the village. Um, that, that might be something to discuss and maybe there's a distinction between the production of fine arts and folk craft versus the retail sale. But again, I think um, there's, going to be, there's going to be numerous more amendments to this and it, it sh might also very well fall under the focus NAG's had um, ordinance rewrite. Um, transit stops. Um, noted that we have those prohibited throughout town, but the Dare County CTP addresses those. I think that is an inconsistency that we should change. Um, the next couple of items there um, are related to indoor entertainment, indoor recreation facilities versus um, aerobic dance and um, karate schools. There's a lot of history there aerobic dance and karate schools were that was a text amendment um, made specifically for a warehouse structure in the c3 district which is combined with a real estate rental management facility so uh, that is sort of meant to be a combined use whereas when you look at indoor fitness center the definition of that um, talks about a building that is exclusively for indoor fitness um, not something that's part of a larger use but it is very confusing and it is inconsistent and that is something that we do need to address. Um, and that one there really, I, I just brought that up because indoor fitness is indoor fitness is indoor fitness and I know all about the little things but you know, how can you include some indoor fitness and not include other indoor fitness in what could be a, you know, a yoga studio or a fitness studio sitting in a mall there? And, and, you know. I think as part of this process, we realize there's a significant number of inconsistencies. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these things that you brought to our attention, Commissioner Ratzenberger, it's, a, it's an easy change to a V or an X and a cell, but broadly there are a lot of inconsistencies that um, we didn't necessarily intend to address in, in this process, mm -hmm. but there's going to be another one after this that will be much lengthier, I'm sure. Um, Did my piece of paper come back? No, they have it up there. Nope. Oh, is that what, or is that what Roberta's using? I'll, I'll bring it back to you, but the, okay. the remainder, um, I guess the other thing in here to note is um, as far as customary accessory wind and solar facilities, that was uh, oversight by staff. Uh, we simply forgot to include solar. and. Uh, solar should be permitted as an accessory use. Um, and then the last note here, a bakery or a deli in the SPDC and not elsewhere, and that's a really wonderful example of just bad terminology and inconsistency because in the village it's a delicatessen, but in the town it's a food store. But you, when you look at them differently, they're, they're coined differently. And I'm sure there's many more of these, so um, I'm sure some commissioners have oh. questions or comments that maybe they didn't get to us in time to address, um, but send them their way and we'll see what we can do. Any other questions for Ms. Wyatt? Just a comment, um, Kelly, just for your info and the rest of the uh, board. <laughs> I had several items that I had questions on. I've discussed those with Andy. And in general, um, they'll need to be addressed as we go into the ordinance rewrite. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Things that haven't been decided yet. 
or not sure how they're going to fall out. Anything else? Any other questions for Kelly? All right. Thank, Thank you very much, Kelly. All right. Would any member of the public care to comment on this proposed text amendment? If so, this is your opportunity. No? Mr. Cornwell, do you have any anything to add? <laughs> Does the board wish to receive any other information about these proposed text amendments before you begin your deliberations? Nothing further? Not, not at this time. All right, at this time, then we will conclude the public hearing and the board may begin its deliberations on this set of proposed text amendments. Okay, discussion. Mayor Pro Tim Walters, you have your comments? Um, I had a few questions which I discussed with Andy, but I'll give him, you know, it's, it's things that will need to be cleaned up later, things that will require a greater discussion. And while this is something that um, we didn't anticipate coming about. Um, you know, we, we I feel like we need to proceed with this and, you know, it just kind of emphasize some of the things we've known for a while regarding our ordinances and the inconsistencies, which is why we embarked on the focus nag said uh, process and the ordinance rewrite. So I think some of it will be cleaned up in that process and the rest of the remaining issues we will just continue to address over time, but I believe, you know, when it goes to technical, they'll, they'll catch a lot catch of it. A lot of Commissioner the Mayor? Um, just to, in addition to what I've already said, uh, this whole task was uh, nearly a mission impossible, probably will never be totally finalized, and we'll have to deal with uh, exceptions and unanticipated topics when they come up and continue to amend uh, but I think we need to get started somewhere and this is a good place to start and we'll continue it through the focus and exit process okay, thank you Mr. Reisberg I I'm you know we I'm ready to just we need to get this on the books for what protection we can get from it it's almost an, as mentioned, an impossible task, and it's not our fault. I've used the word idiot and legal and something in the, in the same <laughs> sentence in here, but that's exactly what we're facing. There's no common sense to this whole exercise, and we have to go back, and I don't even think, I don't know if it's part of focus even then, to go through with a small team to try and Purge all of this and get it consistent. And I mean, we, we just come up, there's hundreds of them. And there's a bigger effort to get things shrunk down, the rest of it, but this may be a small focused team of something to get on this particular issue so that when somebody comes into town and says, I want to do ABC, we can easily find ABC in the code and say, here's where you can do that. Or if you can't do it in one, what do you want to do with it? And, and we're not at that point because I gave up as I was going through this one. After the rearranging, which I, uh, everything, I gave up on it because there were just so many, what does that word mean versus the other one? And so let's get it on the books and then get it fixed. And I think it needs to be fixed independent of focus. Um, to get, I mean, go through, because there's probably a bunch of text amendments simply to change names, or maybe there's a grand design, Andy and I were talking before about just a grand index design that we have that would point us in the right direction. But I think it needs to get done soon rather than later, in my opinion. I agree. Time is of the essence in this, as far as I, I'm concerned, unless we get something in, into town in a place that we don't want it. I think time is of the essence on passing this ordinance. It might not be perfect, but our planning board and staff have done an outstanding job of getting it this far. It's a huge, huge task, and, and our planning, planning staff and planning board have just done an outstanding job. So. I'd like to go ahead and adopt this ordinance tonight, and then, uh, and then we'll focus. Uh, we'll work on it with the technical committee as part of focus, and then we'll probably be doing some more work on it after that. So we'll see how we go. 
Do we have a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve this. Is there a second to the motion? The motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor of adopting the order that says present it tonight, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, and so order. Mr. Lighty, do you have anything to bring to us tonight? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, I do not have anything to present this evening. Next item is presentations from our, our town manager, and you would also want a closed session later on, I understand? Yes, sir, for acquisition of property. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, I first want to start by thanking town staff, uh, particularly Amy Miller, uh, the finance officer, for her hard work and dedication and her oversight and direction in putting this budget together. Also want to thank uh, Roberta Thuman, who's handing out something that she's put a lot of time, energy, and effort in, and I'm extremely pleased with the, the presentation of this year's budget. Um, I think you'll find it um, easy to read. I think you'll find it um, full of information. I think it, it captures what you've been looking for over the last couple of years. Um, so I want to thank, start off by thanking them. Um, also, I want to thank all the department heads. Um, they did an excellent job in recognizing um, the, the board direction and the financial um, responsibility that we have. And I think the, the requests that they made are representative of understanding that. Um, it's not about uh, wants, it's about uh, needs and trying to accomplish the directions that you've given us. So for your consideration is the manager's recommended budget for fiscal year July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, which has been prepared in, accord in accordance with the North Carolina Local Government Fiscal Control Act as required by North Carolina General Statute Chapter 159-11. Um, I also need to thank Deputy Town Manager Andy Garman, uh, Deputy Finance Director Kim Blankenberg, the Human Resources Director Bree Floyd, as well as uh, all the department heads. One thing that I think it's important for, that when, as staff, we uh, consider and focus on and apply are the values that you've instilled and that you've uh, written. Um, and so when we're putting these requests together and we're putting this recommend together we we consider those values which include a healthy and natural environment a customer friendly financially stable and technology technologically forward government livable well-maintained neighborhoods safe nurturing and family friendly environment we value a high standard and efficient infrastructure and we also value our local businesses um, again this year uh, we have funds allocated towards your five strategic areas. Um, so you'll find funding in this recommenda recommended budget for parks and recreation, NAGS head promotion, stormwater management, sanitation and recycling, uh, and shoreline management. This is the first year of um, the town will start using a two year budget. The first year for fiscal year 27 and 18 represents the proposed operating budget for the coming year. The second year, fiscal year 1819, represents the financial plan year. Since the budget provides a basis for all fiscal policy decisions during a particular period, this budgeting methodology allows the town to be more strategic in its budget planning, reviewing operating expenses, capital projects, and revenues within a two year window. Um, this, again, was the first year, and, and as I've said, Amy did a great job of, of orchestrating that and walking staff through it, and uh, I was pleased with how staff adapted. Uh, this year's general fund budget total is $16,935,105. That's an increase from last year of $931,016, or 5.82%. Due to beach nourishment in fiscal year 2018 or 19, the municipal service district tax rate is recommended at 17 and a half cents. Also recommended is keeping the town ride rate uh, at 2.7 cents, and this will help supplement the project's debt payment. 
one cent in MSD generates $79,548. In addition to this revenue, Dare County has committed to at least half or $12,573,356 of the estimated $25,546,711 million. I thought I'd get tongue tied on all these numbers before. <laughs> Uh, made it longer than I thought. Um, the, the contribution from the county along with the funds from the town's existing capital reserve fund enables the town to cover the debt service for the project with a lower MSD tax rate than what was established for the original project. We, and as you know, we anticipate adding 2.3 million cubic yards of sand along our beach with these funds. Funds are budgeted for performance-based merit increases uh, to implement recommendations from our paying classification study conducted early in 2016. Uh, funding of $93,337 is budgeted in the general fund and $8,736 in the water fund. A salary adjustment for all employees is budgeted at $136,513 for the general fund and $12,815 for the water fund. That salary adjustment coincides with the January 1, 2017 CPI. The budget also recommends a new engineering technician position with salary and benefits of $90,367. This cost would be split 25% in the water fund, excuse me, yes, 25% in the water fund and 75% in the general fund. An additional sanitation equipment operator is recommended in this budget with salary and benefits of $61,085. Also recommended is funding uh, to include converting one police lieutenant position to a deputy police chief position. Due to higher claims and in health insurance in uh, fiscal year 2617, the town will see a 7% increase in medical premiums for both employees and retirees. Uh, but the board uh, was very wise in setting aside $80,000 in savings from a, a decrease that we saw the current fiscal year. $40,000 of that savings is recommended to be applied to this to offset, uh, to help offset as well as $40,000 in the uh, following fiscal year. Um, the, the general fund property values our real personal property increased by $21,301,000. Um, our real personal property now is valued at $2,336,131,230. The municipal service district value uh, is $797,476,000. Uh, the ad valorem um, and we're about as close as you could possibly be to collecting every penny uh, of taxes, and that's a credit to, again to our finance staff and our Linda Bittner, our finance uh, office, or excuse me, our tax collector. I just promoted it, sorry. Um, but our ad valorem values, based on that that uh, assessed value, is uh, for 17-18 is 8,431,000, um, which is an increase um, of. A million, about a million and a half dollars. Other taxes and licenses, which I'll get to, is I think extremely important to note. Five million eighty-one thousand dollars. That that's uh, projected at a decrease, and again, that's largely because of the decrease of, in our share of, of values. It, it's hard to see on this on this screen, but the uh, you have the manager's message in front of you. General fund revenues. Um, we are still just under half of our revenues coming from ad valorem taxes. Um, I wanted to pull out to the left the other taxes and licenses, and those are shared revenues, sales, occupancy, and land transfer taxes. Um, they make up 30% 30, uh, 30 of our revenue, and you'll see, you'll see the blue, and that's uh, occupancy tax, which is at $2 million. Uh, $313,000 sales taxes at $2.2 million in land transfer, um, which, which is uh, at $534,000. So you can see when we're, when we're 
it's a pretty good value for what, what we're generating um, in returning services. Um, and we're very fortunate to have the, a tourism-based economy that puts half of our revenue. Um, a, tax, a tax increase from 2617 allowed us to stable, stabilize the recommended fiscal year budget even with the reduction, reduction in shared revenues. Um, so we're, we're holding the townwide tax rate uh, at the same. There's no tax increase proposed. Contributions in the governing body reflect $10,000 for the partnership with Nags Head Woods Nature Conservancy. The contribution to the Capital Reserve Fund is the annual offset for the collection of facility fees budgeted at $50,000. Municipal Service District taxes of $1,392,000 and townwide taxes of $629,000. And of course, that's for the repayment of the debt service bonds for beach nourishment. Also included, again, is a uh, one penny tax uh, offset for the, uh, an equivalent of $233,000 <coughs> to uh, set aside funding in the Capital Reserve Fund for both Parks and Recreation and Stormwater. One penny for Parks and Recreation and one penny for Stormwater. Dowdy, the, uh, the projects in the 2718 recommended budget include um, year five of the Dowdy Park purchase debt, uh, year five of five, $101,180 uh, funding for phase two and three of Dowdy Park of 106820 Of course, grant funding is uh, also associated with that and $25,000 for the beach road and multi-use path repairs. The next uh, graph will show you our expenditures um, set out by function. Um, each one of these piles will represent a function of, of government. Um, inner fund because of beach nourishment being the highest this year. Um, in stormwater, the $235,534 recommended is uh, uh, fully funded from the stormwater capital reserve. We have a 10-year master plan at uh, $100,000 is recommended for funding as part of recommended budget. Um, stormwater management projects include work on the South Nags Head drainage improvements at $50,000. Mall Drive drainage improvements at 35,000 and uh, pump automation in Vista Colony for 18,000. Uh, we're recommending facility fees include $10,000 for police facility fees towards the L3 mobile vision software hardware and $25,000 for fire facility fees um, to go towards the debt on station 21. Um, the capital improvement projects that are cash funded Ac access control software, $6,800. A street master plan pavement conditioning survey of $50,000. Taser, the Taser Assurance Program for police at $7,476. And a brush truck uh, in public works. Financed at $12,560 is time and attendance software. Uh, a boom tractor at $34,000. The Bonnet Street Bathhouse um, construction, um, it's a total of 441250 but the debt service in that this coming fiscal year would be $89,250. Um, Freightliner, the debt service on that at $35,196. Police body cameras financed with the vehicles will be at $2,121. Funding by grants, which I mentioned, the Daddy Park Phase 2 and 3 of $10,000 and the L3 Mobile Vision software at $24,000. Uh, water, the water fund, there are no water rate increases included in the recommended budget. Uh, however, there are changes that we'll be, uh, be recommending to the consolidated fee schedule in conjunction with this fiscal year. Uh, we're looking at increases for the water meter drop-ins, uh, water tap connections, and replacement hydrants. We're also looking at a change to the town's leak, uh, water leak adjustment. Um, currently we're averaging about $60,000 a year that we're writing off for water loss. Um, and that's not obviously not sustainable for a, for a business enterprise. Uh, and we need to look at reducing that. We also can anticipate in the coming uh, or the next fiscal year that the, the water master plan will be recommending rate increases. Um, so we've, we've kind of felt best to hold off for that. Um, you'll see in the manager's message the water fund revenues and water fund expenditures. Um, that fund totals 
uh, is balanced at three million two hundred fifty two hundred fifteen thousand eight hundred and eighty six dollars uh, and again the same uh, revenue and expenditure pie charts that show the uh, the expense by function in the water fund we have a decentralized wastewater management plan uh, of $150,000. Um, in closing, the, uh, to close out what's recommended in 1718, uh, no tax increase townwide general fund uh, budget of $16,935,105. That does include, um, we are including a 17 and a half cent tax rate in the municipal service district and contributing this uh, holding steady the 2.7 cents for the townwide uh, portion of beach nourishment. Um, I did want to, since this is a two-year budget and we have some legislation that we are closely watching, I felt that it was important to prepare you and look ahead to, to fiscal year 1819. Uh, right now, uh, because of the, uh, the sales tax loss that we're anticipating, uh, we're rec we can foresee at least a one cent tax increase. Um, to offset that revenue loss, which is estimated at $271,000. Uh, initially, it was less than half that, but the calculations did not include um, the hold harmless, the Medicare uh, portion of that. Dare County will see a reduction in, in their loss, but that reduction is shared amongst the six municipalities, so there was an error in calculation. Um, we're going to assume a 0.7% a growth in the levy. Uh, We'll assume that the town uh, percentage of countywide share re revenues will increase from 7.4 to 8.89%. Um, and that, of course, is assuming that there's no change in rates for the county or other municipalities. We'll include a 2% merit adjustment. Uh, have not uh, considered COLA at this time. Uh, we, we're anticipating another health insurance increase. We've been told by Mark III, our consultants, to budge, to look at budgeting a 4.6% increase, and we will use the other 40,000 savings to offset that. Um, we also are looking ahead at including the other post-retirement benefits, or OPEB, funding with your approval of initial investment of $100,000. Uh, we're anticipating two more uh, positions, one sanitation operator and one facility maintenance technician. Um, the recommended debt schedule uh, in CIP is included in your uh, recommended budget. Uh, the, and the water fund, we are anticipating at least a 4% increase uh, in water rates. Um, we've got some big capital projects in 19 that we've deferred. Uh, the South Naxhead Tower Cleaning, Repairing and Painting uh, is $274,000. We have a water line, that, uh, asbestos water line along Barn Street that needs to be extended, uh, re replaced and extended, uh, and tied in to be looped to $235,000, and a Diamond Street to Danube Street water line tie-in at $193,000. Um, so you have set a budget workshop for this coming Monday, May 22nd at 9 o'clock, uh, time specific to end at 12. Uh, same for May 31st, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, and then a public hearing has been advertised, set and advertised on the on the budget. Um, that meeting at 9 o'clock on June 7th. So again, my my thanks to the board for your guidance and direction, and again to the staff for uh, for doing an outstanding job this year. Thank you very much for your presentation, Denny. Denny. Questions, burning questions anybody has tonight, or will they, they wait until our first session? I just, just for grins, why don't we wait till the first session here? <laughs> get through this, <laughs> do some studying. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. No surprises, really. <clears throat> You have uh, an unpublished item, the consideration of a resolution in support of Jeanette's peer director position. Yes, that, sir. That's in the package. You want to present that, please? Yes, sir. We learned last week at the Jeanette's peer advisory committee that uh, similar act that the Senate took similar action as they did in 2015 uh, and included language in the Senate budget bill 
to consolidate the Roanoke Island Aquarium director's position and the Jeanette's Pier director's position, and while specifically eliminating the Jeanette's Pier uh, Aquarium director's position. Um, the, it's, it's, it's difficult to follow this process. It took a couple of days to figure out exactly what you needed to oppose because the, there, a, committee, a committee recommendation was to do exactly what I just explained. Uh, and then you can't find that specific recommendation in the Senate budget. What you find is provision that allows them to accept the committee recommendation. Um, so not only are we asking you to oppose the elimination of that position, we're also noting that the, uh, uh, the I think it's important, the town and ag said strongly opposes the lack of transparency in eliminating the director's position at Jeanette's Pier by simply noting it through approval of a Senate committee report. Um, it's my understanding that the staff um, with, the, with the aquariums had, did not know this was coming until the Senate bill was, um, the, until the Senate bill came out. So you, you took similar action again in 2015. Thankfully at that time it, it never, it came out during um, when the House had the budget and they negotiated this provision out. Um, it remains to be seen if that'll happen, um, but I think this is a, it, not only is it a, a threat uh, uh, to Jeanette's peer, but it's also, it's an issue for the town of Nagshead because it goes without saying that that aquarium is a, the, the pier is a tremendous asset to the town of Nagshead, um, and, and that, that is because of having uh, a director in place yeah, and, right. and expecting one person to have directorship over uh, Ron, uh, the uh, aquarium in Roanoke Island, as well as Jeanette's Pier, is, doesn't have the best interest of uh, of anyone. And it's also worth noting that this position is funded through receipts. So Not the, the state, no state money right, going there, into it. There is no state allocation to fund this position. Um, it it frees up the the revenue that they generate for a for a purpose that no one's identified. And additionally, if they're, yeah, I was just going to say additionally, if they're going to give these duties, this full-time position duties, which the, the direct, current director has been there since the peer opening, to someone else that's not at the facility, chances are they're going to have to give them an increase in salary to do so. That is state money. And that, yeah, so. Um, Correct. I thought it interesting that that, but the committee report appears to have disappeared from the website today. I found it yeah. finally, you. whenever you did. I, I found the whole whole thing this weekend. 500 pages? Yeah, 499 actually. 499, right. But I found it, and I, there it was, because you know I was looking for it in a budget bill, and I never could well, find it. Know. And, and I've had to go to the committee thing and then look for bills in the committee. Well, as of the weekend, 257 was in committee. Today, it's no longer in committee, and I don't know where it went because I wanted to I wanted to double check everything. If I remember in 2015, this same maneuver was spelled out in the main bill, and so that's why I was surprised when I heard about it again. And I went back and looked. There's nothing there. And I just want to point out that we did get a a lengthy newsletter from our senator about all the things that were in the budget and he didn't that wasn't in there i don't yeah. run don't, don't understand well, why got, but got stopped in the house last year by paul tyne but no no i meant this year I'm told him last our year. senator sent this lengthy i got one i know we all did i got two copies of it. yeah me too <laughs> the only thing i'm going to mention is i think that seventy-seven thousand. that's almost close to stealing that Money or misappropriating it for something else. It's not even the. I mean, it. Oh well. Oh well. Do we have a uh, a motion to uh, adopt this resolution and send personal copies to Senator Cook and Representative Boswell, along with the letter, asking for their support? Send it to anyone else besides them? I would send it to the to all representatives, all senators, with a special cover letter to to uh, Senator Cook and Representative Boswell, asking them to please lead the defeat of this bill. 
I'll make that motion. Is there a second to that motion? Motion made, seconded, and in discussion. I would so, just like yes. to add one thing. Um, the pier is self-sustaining. No. Uh, you know, the um, any any shortfall, if there is any shortfall in the pier, that is always made up by the North Carolina Aquarium Society, and I believe that was an agreement between the state and the society. So, essentially, you know, this position is is not state dollars, definitely. So, and uh, the pier is not uh, a big hole, and we invested three hundred thousand from our town, and the county invested seven hundred thousand dollars. Go, go in that pay. pier uh, to make it successful and it is a tremendous asset in our community and in our state so um, to, to take away a position that is critical to the su success of a state asset doesn't make sense to me no. <laughs> we've got a million dollars of local taxpayer money in it plus we have a lot of local contributions to the pier there also. To me, the there's something wrong to me. And I don't know. There's just something <laughs> wrong when they're dealing in position. I don't care whose it is. No. Onesie, twos. Give the money to the, the state agency and let them figure out who they need. If they, mm -hmm. and, and Get out of the business. Same thing that went last time. We'll come back to the close. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah. actually, you sideline. I, I did sideline you. All over the favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Post, like sign, being none, and so on. Uh, okay. Two other things, if I could. You may thank you for that resolution. I, I wanted to just extend again my appreciation to staff for the um, grand opening at Daddy Park Saturday. I mean, it, mm. it was huge success a very exciting time for for the town um, and every department had a hand in it you, uh, public works um, staff was there planning staff was there fire uh, police uh, town engineer was there hopefully uh, he wasn't shooing people off of uh, off, you know, grass. off the grass and yeah. he was selling um, benches he was hustling he was benches, selling benches. Uh, but it was one of those days that it was just you know, be proud about and I thank you all for for the wisdom and seeing that um, letting us yeah. um, provide that for the citizens um, the other thing uh, shifting gears I, I want to extend appreciation to Chief Brinkley um, for the May 15th with the police uh, Pol police peace officers Memorial Day and of course that was also the same day that uh, the date that we lost Sergeant Earl Murray and I I'm just thankful to have a police chief that uh, is attentive to that that day and not forgetting that day it was it's been some time now he communicates with Earl's family checks on them um, and I just appreciate them knowing that they're, they're not forgotten by us and by the town and um, we're fortunate that that uh, he goes that extra step um, and I just and we did a lot to be proud of you know, we did have an officer of uh, escort the family to Washington. Right. We had uh, uh, one of our police officers that, that accompanies the family up to the memorial in D.C. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, and well, I, I would like to really emphasize our appreciation to all the staff for the great event that we had for the town of Nags Head, but it was also a, a great event for the Outer Banks. All of the feedback I got from <laughs> folks that live in the, other, in the other towns on the Outer Banks was, was just as just as glowing as the feedback we got from our citizens at Nags Head, and I certainly appreciate all the effort that went into it. It was a tremendous effort by all involved, and we want to personally thank you for all of that. And the only other thing for me is that at, with the appropriate general statute that gives me the cover to ask the board to go into closed session for to discuss the acquisition of 10211 East Seagull Drive. The, the correct statute would be North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A5. We have a, a motion. So moved. To the reference to that statute, okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We will return in just a minute.
Board of Commissioners back in session. Mr. Lighty, would you report out on the closed session, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the board did uh, con uh, confer and discuss uh, the potential acquisition of the property uh, located at 1021, I'm sorry, 10211 East Seagull Drive. Um, they did take action to give instructions to the town manager, but no other actions were taken. Okay. Thank you very much. On the board of commissioners agenda, does oh, we've lost one commissioner. <laughs> Any of our commissioners have a, an agenda item tonight? No, I would just like to also reiterate my sincere thanks to the entire staff um, for all the hard work on Dowdy Park. It was it was an awesome event. It's an awesome park. It will be enjoyed for generations. So, thank you, to everybody. Thing on your agenda tonight, no, Mr. Same, same thing. Thank you for the thank you for Dowdy Park for all the work and the effort that went into it. And also thank you for this permissions usage matrix. <laughs> which is hours and hours of work in that one. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. And the budget. I don't have anything on my agenda tonight. Is there any other business we need to discuss tonight? If not, we'll recess until 9 a.m. May 22nd. Discuss the budget. <laughs>